Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Boris FX and I'm back again with another tutorial and this time I'm going to show you why the SFX Builder tool is the best tool for compositing inside of Avid Media Composer. All right, as you can see, we are in Avid Media Composer. And before we get rolling, I want to give a big shout out to artgrid.io for the use of this footage in this tutorial. And I also want to point out, it doesn't really matter which version of Avid Media Composer that we are in, as long as it can run version 20.5 of Sapphire, you'll be able to follow along with this lesson. Now, our Fun with Sea Lions title is just a simple title tool title that I have created, black title, and I've applied the S Glow Edges effect just to make it stand out a little bit from the background. So I just basically took that effect, dragged it and dropped it. I applied it to the title slash key, and we're all set to go. Now, what we're going to be doing here is I'm gonna be working with my Sea Lions working sequence. Now, the difference between this sequence and the sequence that I have here is that I've basically just stripped all the effects off. I have my three clips that I've set up ready to go. And we're now going to get in and work with Builder. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that I've sort of chosen my shots. I'm not going to say wisely, but you have to think a little bit through what you're doing first before you get into Builder. Because the second layer here is what's going to be happening in the upper right-hand corner, I do want to make sure that the sea lions more or less sort of congregate up here in the upper right-hand corner. And for our sea lion that's blowing bubbles, as long as he appears somewhat in the middle of the screen or over towards the left, he's going to work perfectly, or she for that matter, is going to work perfectly over here on the left-hand side. All right, so let's command or control an eight to call up the effects palette. I'm going to type in S underscore effect. Now, from now on in this tutorial, I will not be referring to this as S effect. I'll simply be referring to it as the builder tool. I'm going to take the Builder tool, I'm going to drag it and drop it down onto my shot. This is actually a two-level composite that what we're going to do first is we're going to worry about getting this element to appear up here in the upper right-hand corner, and then we will step in and worry about getting this element in the lower left-hand corner. So what we're going to do is I'm going to step into effects mode, Shift and Y is my shortcut. If you don't have it mapped, don't worry, you can always find it right here at the top of your timeline. And we do need to do a little bit of setup before we get rolling, because if we simply jump into Edit Effect, what's going to happen is that once we are in the Builder tool, you'll see that we have our Source node. I'm just going to say Preview Selected node. Our Mask node is empty. Our Source has our Source, but we don't have a background currently set up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm simply going to step out of the Builder tool, and I'm going to make sure that as of right now that our background is going to be set to the first track below. All right. So with that, that background node that we saw in the Builder tool will now be populated by this clip here. All right. Now, what I also do want to mention before we get rolling is that if you wanted to get in and to work with the mask element, you can utilize Mocha right here from within the SFX slash Builder tool. Now, for this lesson, I'm not going to be working with Mocha. I'm actually going to be working with another fantastic parameter or effect inside of the Builder tool that we can use to create mats. But if you needed to get in and create some very odd shaped masks, you can simply do it using Mocha. All right, so let's come up to our Edit Effect option. I'm simply going to click on it. You'll now see there's our source, there's our background. We don't have a mask, but we will take care of that in just a second. Now, our background is basically going to be our full screen image. Our source right now is what's going to appear in the upper right hand corner. So let's get in and let's place this where we're going to want to have it. So the first thing I'm going to do is to get the shape that we're going to need to create our mask. Now again, like I said, you could use Mocha to do this, but what I'm going to do is come right down to the bottom of the components window, and I'm going to drop that down. Now what the components window does is it gives us elements that we can utilize to work with the clips that we have set up in the builder tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the animated shape tool and I'm going to take it and I'm going to drag it and drop it right here. Now, what's important to also keep in mind before I keep rolling through 
is that right now I have things set up to preview every node that I click on. You can actually see that right down here, sort of towards the bottom of the builder tool itself, preview selected node. So keep that in mind. You can toggle that on or off. If it's off, you will be seeing the output of the result node. All right. So for the purposes of us rolling here, I'm going to turn on preview selected node and I'm going to select the animated shape and I'm just going to rename it. We're going to call this shape upper right triangle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it three sides and I'm going to rotate it. All right, something to about there. Now I'm just going to shift it over here. We're going to shift it up a little bit, kind of like that. Now what's also important to keep in mind is I got to make sure I get my rotate kind of right, about 45 degrees. Let's actually just punch in minus 45. There we go. And what we can now do is sort of get this exactly where we need it to be. Perfect, right about there. Okay, so what we're now going to do, and I know this might sound strange, you might be thinking, okay, Kev, are we ready to get in and to you know, start adding our elements? We're not gonna do that. I'm actually gonna create the triangle that's going to go in the lower left-hand corner, even though we're not gonna be working with it inside of this instance of the effect. So all I'm gonna do is right-click and we're going to duplicate upper right triangle, and I'm simply gonna rename this, and we're gonna call this lower left triangle. All right. Now it's always important to name your notes. So this way there's never any confusion as to what they are and what they do. All right. So we're going to take the upper or the lower left triangle, pardon me, and I'm just going to shift it over. I'm going to shift it down. Now it looks like the other one's disappeared, but it hasn't. Remember, if I click on it, it is still there. If I wanted to see both of these at the same time so I could see exactly what's going to be happening in my composite, you'll see that I can actually chain these two together. So when I click lower left triangle, I'm going to see the upper right hand triangle being fed through this node to see its output. All right, now let's rotate this the other way. And I'm gonna put it, it's probably about 180 maybe. Ah, not even too much. Let's bring it back to about there. That's pretty good. And we're just gonna shift this again back over here, shift it down a little bit. I'm going for pretty close and I think that's pretty close right there. So ideally, this is roughly what our composite is going to look like. One element here, one element here, background element here. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect these nodes. Now, for the purpose of this instant of the, the this instance of the effect, we're going to be working with the upper right hand triangle, but I'm going to leave the lower left triangle inside of our build. Remember, I can add these. Whether I actually use them or not doesn't matter. They'll be there for me to use later on. Okay? So the first thing that we are going to need to do with our source is we're going to need to patch this triangle into it so that we can see what our element is going to look like in the upper right hand corner. Now to do that, I'm going to use another tool. I'm going to use the cutout tool. Now you can take it and drag it and drop it right here and let go or you can drag it right over top of the whip that connects these two nodes together and let go. Now you'll notice that nothing has happened. Basically, source, cutout, result. Why? Because we haven't actually done anything. We haven't actually patched anything into it, into the mat input for it to actually cut out. So let's now use our upper right triangle. I'm gonna patch it into the mat and now you'll see we have our element sitting inside of that upper right triangle. Now, of course, it's not exactly positioned where I would like it to be positioned. So let's adjust that. Now, here's the time where we're going to want to turn off preview selected node because I want to preview the output of this chain. All right, so let's now come in and I want to do a transformation. So I'm simply going to type in transform. We're going to grab our warp transform and I'm going to place it in between the source and the cutout because we want this to happen before the cutout happens. So I'm gonna apply it right there, drop it in right there, and I'm simply going to get in and shift, there we go, shift our element, and I'm just gonna put it roughly where it's gonna go, probably right about there. Now, keep in mind, we can drag through. Our C lines are looking pretty good right there. Very nice. All right, now, one thing that I also want to point out at this point, because it's important that I don't have to go back and do this after the fact, is you're going to take a look. And if you take a look over here where it says warp transform, 
we have this little checkbox, and I have all these checkboxes that appear right here. I'm going to come down and I'm going to say OK. And if you take a look at what's happened now, the Builder tool has actually given me access to the Warp Transform and the upper right hand triangle parameters, all of them. Now you can imagine what a mess this is going to be by the time I'm done. When I've added a whole bunch of nodes, there's going to be a whole bunch of information in here. To be honest, it's a lot. So how do we get around this? Let me show you. I'm going to come back into Edit Effect. Once the Builder tool is open, I'm going to select Warp Transform. And because I'm now happy with the position of where my footage is inside of this composite, I'm going to turn all those parameters off. I'm also going to do the same thing for the upper right hand triangles parameters. I'm going to turn all of them off and I'm just going to make sure for the lower left triangle as well we're going to turn all of those parameters off even though it's not connected to anything. And I'm now simply going to say OK. You'll now notice that those two parameters have disappeared. I don't have access to any of the parameters that were available inside any of those two uh, effects we'll call them. So I'm going to come back in and we're going to edit the effect and we're just going to finish off the upper right hand corner so we can move on to the lower left hand corner. Now what I had also done here was I had added a drop shadow. Now what's very cool about this, now I should have just called it drop shadow because I believe drop shadow is all one word here. There we go, drop shadow. Again, drag and drop after the cutout. Boom, there's a drop shadow. We can now adjust its positioning. And I'm just going to adjust its opacity as well. I want its softness. I really just want it to look like it's sort of hanging over top like that. Now I don't want it to be too far in the distance. I think that's pretty good right about there. All right. Now you might be thinking that we're done. However, there is one more parameter that I want to add in here. You're probably thinking, well, what other parameter could you need? Well, what we've done is we've come in and we've taken our footage and we've positioned it. Then what we've done is we've added the cutout that basically puts it up here in the upper right hand corner. We've added a drop shadow to that element. However, what I like to do is I like to be able to control the X position of this element so that we can slide it in like you saw in the introduction. So what I now want to do is after I've done all of this, I'm going to add the transform effect back in. Let's take it. I'm going to add it right here. What we're also going to do is turn off all of the parameters except the shift parameter. Now you'll notice that shift comes with X and Y, which I'm totally fine with. But now what that gives me the ability to do is to slide the entire element as one on screen and off screen. All right. Now what's also important to keep in mind is up until this point, I've only been dealing with the upper right hand corner. What I'd actually like to do now is to merge it with the background. Okay, I'm going to zoom back just so I can see a few more of my nodes by simply holding Option or Alt on the keyboard to zoom back a little bit. Just because I want to give myself a little bit more real estate here. Very nice. All right, let's close all this off. And what I want to do is come back to my tools and I want to come down and I want to composite these two elements over top of each other. You'll notice that when I drag the composite node in and I hover over its inputs, I have one input called front, one input called back. Well, we want to composite this element as the front element, the background as the back. And what we're now going to do is patch that into the result. And you'll now see that we have the element sitting in the upper right hand corner over top of our footage. So what we're now going to do is we're simply going to say OK. Now you'll see that my warp transform here gives me the shift X and Y parameters. However, what I should have done, because I'm all about organization, is I should have come to warp transform too, and I should have called this upper right triangle, and then come down and said OK. You'll now see it's called upper right triangle, which I can now from right here inside the effects palette, slide back and forth. All right. So now what we're going to do is I'm simply going to take this element and I'm going to drag it and drop it to the effect onto the topmost layer. Now what's very cool about the builder tool is that what it's going to do with the background being the first track below is not just look at the clip, but look at the entire composite. Okay. Let's now come in and let's edit effect. 
First thing I want to do, once we get into the Builder tool here, is I want to preview the selected node and only preview the background. Now you'll see the background is the composite that we had before. So we have to change things up a little bit, but I did this like this for a very specific reason. You'll now see that if I take the upper right hand triangle and I delete it in our case, and I take the lower left hand triangle and I patch it in to the cutout, you'll now see that what we end up having is almost what we're looking for. You'll see there it is down there in the lower left hand corner. We do need to make a few adjustments, obviously, before we move on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this warp transform because I need to see what exactly is going on with this clip. What we're going to need to do is to reposition this footage here, our source clip, let's just preview here, to place our little sea lion in the lower left hand corner. So now what we're going to do is again, much like we had done before, I'm going to come back to transform the warp transform node. I'm going to drop it in and we're going to reposition our friend over here. Let's actually come down to the cutout. Okay, he needs a little bit or she for that matter needs a little bit more moving. So let's just position them. Right about there I think is pretty good. Okay. And now what we can do is simply come down to the result and you'll see that it's looking almost right, except I'm missing the drop shadow. What's important to keep in mind with the drop shadow is I actually have it going this direction here. I need to just reposition it so that it's going this direction here. So let's come down to our drop shadow and let's just adjust its position like such. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. We can even just shift it up a little bit to about there. I think that's looking pretty good. And what we also want to make sure of is that with this node now, we're now not going to call this upper right. It's now lower left triangle. So let's now come to here, make sure we have everything turned off. It's all turned off. That's good. 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 I'm pretty sure I'd already shut that off. So now when I say OK, if you take a look at the effects editor, you will see that we have our lower left triangle with the shift X and Y parameter. Let's just view the topmost layer here. There we go. And if I switch down to the version of the effect below it, you'll now see that we have our upper right hand triangle with its shift X and Y parameter as well. So let's just get in and create that little animation I'd created off the top. I believe I came in about one second. I'm just going to step back into effects mode here. And let's now add a couple of keyframes. So we're just going to add a keyframe to the X value. I will come down one second. I will add another keyframe and we will just slide this parameter off screen. There we go, or that element off screen. Let's just make sure the shadow's gone as well. Perfect. Let's now move to the layer below. I'm going to again add a keyframe. We will come down one second add another keyframe. I will slide this off the frame. And what we've now created, if I step out of effects mode, is basically a very complex element that we wouldn't be able to create inside of Avid Media Composer on its own using the power of Sapphire and the Builder tool. Now, don't forget, if you subscribe to Sapphire, you can download the 2020.5 update right now. And for more great training, don't forget to check us out on the Boris FX YouTube channel. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.